ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد my dearest Beloved brothers and sisters, you may have all come across the idea that the Qur'an is a cure, it is a healing, it is shifa. And maybe when you hear that, your mind goes towards the illnesses that are spiritual. It is a cure for maybe black magic, for jinn possession, for hasid, for ayn. And though that is true, the reality is that the Qur'an is a cure for all types of diseases, physical, spiritual and even mental. Allah the Almighty says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we sent down in this Qur'an what is a cure and a mercy for the believers. And the scholars of tafsir, they say, the Qur'an being a shifa in this verse means it can cure any disease. Any disease. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tadawaw ibad Allah. Seek cure, O slaves of Allah, for Allah has not sent down a disease except he sent down the cure. The only exception is when people become senile due to old age. This is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are in fact many examples where the Quran is being used to treat conditions, illnesses, that are not spiritual, such as a man who was once cured of a scorpion sting using Surah Al-Fatiha, hadith found in Sahih Al-Bukhari. I wanted to share with you today the meaning of a powerful surah that is said to be healing and a cure for mental illnesses, such as anxiety and stress and even perhaps depression. And this does not mean that a cure for these problems cannot be found outside of the scope of the Qur'an. But what people often miss is that the Qur'an actually does help us in every aspect of our life, every illness that we face, even the mental illnesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all cure from all types of diseases. Allahumma ameen. And this surah is one that I'm sure many of us are familiar with, but have not really appreciated the message it has to do with healing and cure. And that is Surah Al-Duha. It is no surprise then that this Surah was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was going through a difficult time himself, a time of anxiety and stress. The books of Tafsir, they say that in the very early stages of his mission, the Qur'an was being revealed to him continuously and all of a sudden it stopped. Jibreel السلام, stopped coming to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Qur'an ceased to be revealed. Days went past and as the time elapsed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam became worried. Why is it that the Qur'an is not being revealed to me anymore? People around him, they sensed something was wrong and the Quraysh, his enemies, they started to taunt him. In one narration, a Qurayshi woman said, perhaps his Lord wadda'ahu wa qalahu, that perhaps his Lord hates him and has said goodbye to him. And this made it even worse for the Prophet ﷺ. And this continued, according to some scholars, for 40 days, where he was in turmoil, not knowing what was going on, if he had done something wrong, if this was some type of punishment, and then the silence was broken through the revelation of Surah Al Duha. A'udhu billahi min ash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Wa al Duha. Wa al Layli idha saja. Ma wa al Dagh ka Rabbuka. Wa ma qala. 
Allah says, I swear by the morning rays and by the stillness of the night, your Lord has not said goodbye to you, nor does he hate you. Subhanallah. How uplifting must that have been to hear for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah begins by taking an oath and setting the scene. Today we have the sunlight coming through the glass. Allah says, I swear by Al-Duha, which is the time of the morning where there is freshness. There is a sense of new beginning. There is hope, there is optimism, and even feeling the rays of the sun on the body can be very therapeutic. Allah says, I swear by that time of the day, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا saja, saja al bahar the Arabs say, refers to when the oceans become calm and serene and the waves are not choppy. A time of the night that is quiet. Allah says, I swear by the morning rays and by the serenity of the night. To tell you that your Lord ma wadda'aka. Wadda'a means to say farewell, to say goodbye. Like we say the last khutbah was called khutbatul wada'. Because it was the final farewell sermon of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah is saying we did not say goodbye to you. This is not the end of the road, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ma qala and we do not hate you. The word qala comes from qila, which is the thing in the old days they would use to rub and scrub their dirty clothes and then wash it away like we wash away fairy liquid. Something that you want to get rid of. Allah is saying, وَمَا qala, You are not something that is worthless, something that has no value, something that I have discarded. And the opposite is what Allah intends. Far from bidding you farewell, we have brought you close to us. Far from being worthless, you are invaluable. Allahu Akbar. And if we pause here and just think, what does this mean for us, the followers of the Prophet ﷺ? The extension of his message, those who believe in him and carry his message. It relates to us too, that Allah the Almighty does not deem us to be worthless or distant from him. Rather, Allah loves us and is close to us. And that is something many of us do not think about. Does Allah love me? Have you ever thought about that question? What does Allah say in the Quran? Actually, subhanAllah, one of the beautiful hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will help us to explain whether Allah loves us or not. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, he saw a woman after a battle had finished, she had lost her child and she was frantically looking for her son. The Prophet is sitting there with his companions. They see her in a state of stress and anxiety. And all of a sudden she finds her child. She hugs him and starts to feed him. At that point, the Prophet ﷺ turns to his companion and says, Does any one of you think that she will throw her son in the fire? And they say, Ya Rasulullah, not if she could help it. He says, Allahu arhamu bi'ibadihi min hadihi biwaladiha. Allah has more mercy, love and care for his slaves than this mother has for her child. Allahu Akbar. Have you ever imagined how much a mother loves her child? And here we are being told Allah loves us more than our mothers. Allahu Akbar. If you ever doubted that Allah loves you, ask yourself, why did he choose to place you in the best of all nations, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why did Allah choose for you to be the recipient of the best revelation, Al-Quran Al-Azim, if he doesn't love you? Have you not read that Allah says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What will he get out of punishing you if only you will be grateful and have some faith. Allah does not want to punish. Subhanallah. A shaitan, he wants you to believe that you are worthless in the sight of Allah. So after reassuring the Prophet ﷺ, then Allah gives him some promises. That your future will be better than your past. And one of the meanings the Mufassirun say, this refers to is that the future of the believer 
in the hereafter will always be better than their life in the dunya because they will go to paradise. May Allah count us amongst those people. And this is so powerful for those in a moment of stress and worry. Imagine someone who is very sick and they're told for the rest of your life you'll be very sick. But most people that could destroy them. For the believer, they will say, you know what, even if I live for another 50 years, but I die with La ilaha illallah on my tongue, where will I go for an eternity? This is exactly what the Prophet said in a hadith. He said, on Yawm al Qiyamah, Allah will bring a man who suffered the most in this worldly life, but he died as a believer. Imagine someone in one of these war torn countries, they've only seen death and loss and brutality. And then they died having witnessed only that. That man will be brought on Yawm al Qiyamah and Allah will dip him into paradise for the blinking of an eye and then ask him, did you suffer in this life? Did you see any hardship? What will the man say? He would say, La wallah ya Rabb, ma marra bi bu'sun qattun wa la ra'aytu shiddatan qatt. He said, Allah, I never experienced any hardship, nor did I feel any difficulty, subhanAllah. Why does he say this? Because just the glimpse of paradise is enough to wipe out the memory of suffering in this worldly life for the believer, subhanAllah. You have so much to look forward to. Isn't that enough to carry you through your difficult times in this worldly life? Yes, Allah, it is. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And we are going to gift you something that is going to make you so happy. The Mufassirun, they say, this gift that Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ can be understood to mean us, his followers. Because what he wanted more than anything was for guidance to spread through humanity and for people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told him that on the day of judgment, there will be a pond called al hawd And by that pond, there will be goblets, glasses surrounding it. And your followers will come one by one thirsty. And they will take from the cup and they will drink the water which will come from the river of Al-Kawthar. And they will never be thirsty again. Allahu Akbar. He will see us and we will see him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the thing that will please him the most, Allahu Akbar. Wasn't Allah's promise true? Aren't we here today as a manifestation of the promise of Allah? Yes. Allah's promise will never be broken. And then after promising him a bright future, Allah then spoke about his past. Three times where he went through difficulty and three times Allah was there for him. And as I tell you about these three times, I want you to think about three times that you were in a difficult moment and Allah brought you into safety and relief. Allah says, Alam fa'awa. Didn't Allah, didn't he find you as an orphan child and give you awa, which means a safe, secure shelter? The Prophet ﷺ, his father died before he was born. His mother dies when he is six years old, orphaned twice over. In Arabia, where orphans were often abused and taken advantage of. But Allah says, Fa'awa, but we made sure that you were in comfort because the one who would become your guardian would be Abdul Muttalib, the chief of Banu Hashim, the most powerful man in Mecca. That wasn't an accident. That was me looking after you when you were a child, Allahu Akbar. And that applies to all of us. The weakest moment in our life was the moment we entered this world, unable to feed ourselves, unable to defend ourselves. Who was looking after us? Allah gave us parents that would love us and die for us. Was that not Allah looking after us then? Yes, it was. And then when you became older, you were seeking guidance. You were dal. 
which means that you wanted to know how to worship me and how to correct all of the evils in your society, but you didn't know how. Fahada, and then I guided you. Not only you, I made you into my prophet. I made you into Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that you could know how to worship me and you could guide your people away from idol worship to the pure worship of me alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. You wanted guidance, I gave you the best guidance. Before you were an orphan child, you needed protection, I gave you the best protection. وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى and didn't we find you a ail, which means financially stricken. The Prophet ﷺ was not rich. In fact, when he was a teenager, he had to work as a shepherd to support his uncle Abu Talib and look after his cousin Ali like a son. A very hard job. And even when he becomes slightly older than this, he's still not well off. Allah says, فَأَغْنَى But we enriched you. Do you know how Imam Al-Qurtubi says by marrying him to the richest woman in Mecca, Khatija radiallahu anha. Was that coincidence? No, that was Allah taking care of you financially. Subhanallah. Giving you a woman who would support you emotionally as well as financially. So that you won't have to worry that now you have to become my prophet, propagate my message because you have someone supporting you like this. فَأَغْنَى Allah is saying, though in the most difficult moments of your life, I was there for you every single time. Why then do you doubt me about your future? SubhanAllah. And this is the message to all of us. Sometimes people despair about the future, uncertain about the future, but they don't look to their past. If they did, they will see so many moments that Allah took care of them. Even if you were to consider the food that you eat. If you are 20 years old today and you ate three times every single day from the day you were born until today, how many meals have you devoured? Many of us have never had to skip one meal in our life. Alhamdulillah. Every day for 20 years, Allah has fed you three times. Is it really befitting for a believer to doubt Allah going forward in his life? No, it is not. We place our hope in Allah and we have always positive assumptions about our Lord Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. The shaytan ya'idukum al-faqr. Allah says, a shaytanu ya'idukum al-faqr. The devil, the shaytan, he promises you poverty. And when you think, oh my God, how am I going to take care of myself, my family? What does he make you do? Seek money through haram. He makes you take risks. He makes you cheat. He makes you defraud. Wallahu ya'adukum maghfira. But Allah promises us forgiveness. May Allah forgive us. Wa aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'i muslimin fa astaghfiruhu inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya al-mursaleen, nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een, amma ba'd. The surah began by reassuring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And then Allah gave him promises of a bright future. And then Allah gave him evidence from his past. Amazing organization of the message of this surah. And now what does Allah tell him? He talks to him about his present. I told you about your past and I promise you a bright future. How should you behave now in your life? So when it comes to the orphan now, because you were once an orphan who I took care of, do not repulse them, do not be cruel to them, do not be mean to them. And the opposite is what is intended. Look after the weak and vulnerable in the society. Muslims are supposed to be those who look out for those who have less than them. And it's amazing how Allah the Almighty said, you will know better than anybody because I decreed that you would be an orphan. 
and that you would know the struggles of the weak because you were once weak. Allahu Akbar. Fala taqahar. Be a person who's out there helping those in need. And this subhanAllah is actually an amazing way to help heal your own problems. Sometimes when a person is going through a very dark moment in their life, they focus on themselves. They think about their problems and they think and they think and they overthink, making it worse, adding fuel to the fire. But if they would just step out and look at those worse than them, they would realize that, you know what? Even though my situation is bad, there are many others that have it far worse. We only have to look to our brothers and sisters in Gaza to know what it means to have a hard life. Subhanallah. We cannot be blind to the blessings of Allah when the devastation is so close to us. May Allah grant them relief, safety, and victory. Allahumma ameen. And when it comes to the sa'il, which can mean somebody who needs something from you, it could be money. It could be knowledge. In fact, it could be any need. Allah says, when it comes to the sa'il, فَلَا تَنْهَرْ Which means, don't turn them away. Don't think that, why, does, why do I have to be the one to help that person? Allah is saying, look, you were once poor, O Muhammad Wasallam. I enriched you. I gave you money. Do you think I gave you that money so you could keep it to yourself? Is that why Allah gives us money? So we can keep it to ourselves? So we can make ourselves rich? We can look after number one? No! That is what other people do. Allah gave us money so we could use it to help others. And to ensure that we do, Allah said, you must give some zakat. Just 2.5%. But how much did Allah encourage to give sadaqah? Subhanallah. So much encouragement to give sadaqah, to keep the money flowing in the community. So that those who are, have less than us, they don't see, what, look at the gap between the rich and the poor. Because the rich are always giving back to the poor. This is the culture that Islam seeks to create. We have lost track of this. So Allah says, فَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ when it comes to those who need something. And the scholars say it can even refer to knowledge. Somebody asks you for advice. Don't turn away from that person thinking, I haven't got time for that person. Why are they asking me for? Or they don't deserve my knowledge. A'udhu billah min dhalik. Who gave you that knowledge? Who gave you that experience? Why did Allah give it to you? Is it not to help someone who doesn't have it? Yes, that is the reason. Subhanallah. Do not be miserly with your money and do not be miserly with your knowledge. May Allah grant us tawfiq. And then the last thing Allah says, And as for the ni'mah, an ni'mah, the blessing, فحدث, proclaim it, speak it, declare it. One of the interpretations of this ayah is that Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when it comes to the blessings that you enjoy in your life, make sure that you are always in a state of gratitude, making shukr, saying Alhamdulillah. And again, today we learn that actually for your mental health, it's very important to be a grateful person, to be grateful for the things that you have, because it makes you have a different perspective in life. It allows you to appreciate things. It stops you being blind to all of the things that are right in your life and focusing on the one or two things that are wrong. It is amazing, subhanAllah, how much the Qur'an focuses on shukr. The very first words in the Qur'an are what? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah chose to make the first statement in the Qur'an, all praise and thanks is due to Allah. That is what Allah wants to see grateful servants and then Allah will tell us on the day of judgment when the believers are told to enter paradise what will they say Qalu sadaqana wa'dahu. all praise and thanks is due to the one who fulfilled his promise they will say alhamdulillah and then Allah will say when they enter paradise and imagine in paradise what do you see the Prophet said, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no imagination has ever envisaged. In that state of enjoyment, what will they say? 
الحمد لله وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. I say the last thing they will say, meaning when they're in paradise, they will continue to praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa taala. Why? Because they were used to praising and thanking Allah in this dunya. May Allah make us from the shakirin. So important to be grateful, and there are so many blessings that we do not even consider blessings, but they are essential to our well-being. In the 1980s, there was a Greek man who was said to be the richest person in the world at the time. He owned the biggest fleet of ships. His name was Aristotle Onesay, I think. This man, despite his power, his richness, towards the end of his life, he contracted a disease, a rare disease, an autoimmune disease. And what it meant is that he lost the power of his eyelids. He couldn't blink anymore. And what happened is that he had to be given an eye drop that if he never put in his eyes every 10 seconds, he would become blind. And so there is a famous picture of him on the cover of a newspaper where he has both his eyelids stuck above his eyes like this, stuck like this. So they are remain open. And they said, this man, Despite all of his wealth, without his eyelids, he will become blind and surely he will die. Why? Because they said the eyelids, they blink and every time they blink, they remove some dirt or foreign bodies that fall on the eyes, without which you would become blind, subhanAllah. Have you ever thanked Allah for your eyelids? Have you? SubhanAllah. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ فَلَا تُحْسُوهَا Allah says, if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to. There are so many things that we should be grateful for that we forget about, we are heedless about. But as soon as you start to count, as soon as you start to consider, you think, subhanAllah, what is going right in my life is so much more than what is going wrong. Say, Alhamdulillah. And it is so difficult, my brothers and sisters. It is so difficult to say, Alhamdulillah, in tough times. Isn't it? It's, it's okay to say, you can say Alhamdulillah when things are well, when you've got money, when things are going, you say Alhamdulillah. But when things are not going well, when things are difficult, it is so hard to say Alhamdulillah. But if you're not in the habit of saying Alhamdulillah for the small blessings, you will be very hard pressed to say Alhamdulillah when it's times are difficult. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be shakirin in good times and in bad times. And let us never ever forget about those who have less than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support our brothers and sisters who are suffering in the world today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them, grant them victory and steadfastness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all unity. Rabbana dhanamna anfusana wa illam takhfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa dhammir a'da'ak a'da'a al-deen. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقيم الصلاة